not now. Those dumb goons, Gustav and Theodore, they found us. Here's the trailer, just like Bob said. Yeah, but I don't think Johnny the Indian was dumb enough to hide the cash here. I don't either, but we better check. Did you see that? Fresh footprints by the door. Do you think they belong to that idiot and that bimbo? They only belong to one person. And by the size of them, they must be his. Hmm. Something tells me they're close by. They probably split up to try and find where Johnny stashed the dough. I bet they'll come back here. Either together or alone. What if they have the money? Nah, I don't think so. Plus, finding them in this area won't be that easy. This is a huge desert. Let's do a full search of this trailer and wait for a while to see if they show up. But if they don't? Then we'll go out and look for them. And mark my words, we'll find them, whatever it takes. And when we do, they'll wish they'd never been born. Come on! Rotten killers! I've got to do something before those two find us. Hello, Sushi. Hi, Brian. You have the nun's habit yet? I have it, but now we've got new problems. Right when I was leaving the trailer, Gustav and Theodore showed up. They're the Sandretti's henchmen. They almost saw me. Wow! So they're hot on your trail then? No, I'm afraid not. I guess they knew about Johnny's trailer and must have imagined that we would be looking for it too. From what I could hear them say, they plan on waiting in the trailer to see if we show up. Well, that gives you some time to escape. You've got the habit. Now go get the money and drive away fast. I don't know. Now I realize that Gina and I will never be safe. No matter where we go, they'll end up finding us. Hmm. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I think you're right. So, what can you guys do? I don't know yet. The best thing would be to think of a way to get rid of them all forever. You're a smart woman, Sushi. Can't you come up with something? Well, just like that? No. I'll ponder the topic. Maybe between the two of us, we can devise a solution. But there's one thing that concerns me even more. What if those killers decide to leave the trailer and reconnoiter the area? No doubt they'd quickly find Douglasville. And from what you've told me, they won't hesitate to increase the body count if that'll help them find you. We're all in danger. Yeah, you're right. We should do something about that. As soon as possible. I'll try to think of something. Then I'll tell you about it. Me too. See you soon. Yes, a burst of steam blasted out. It's a sheriff's badge. It must have flown out the smokestack like the cell key did. Yeah, I can use that. It's not too worn out considering the circumstances. Oscar? What's up, Brian? Your life has a new mission. I've spoken to Mama Dorita about this, and she fully agrees. Well, what is it? Oscar, you've been named the new Sheriff of Douglasville. Wow. Please raise your right hand so I can swear you in. Repeat after me. I promise to defend, with my life if necessary, 
the laws set down in the Constitution of this nation. I promise to defend with my wife, if necessary, the laws down in that Constitution of this here nation. And I swear I will do everything necessary to ensure that these laws are not violated and to pursue anyone who might attempt to break them. And I swear I'll do things necessary to ensure them laws aren't violated and to pursue anyone who might attempt to break them. Perfect. Oscar, I hereby officially name you Sheriff of Douglasville. Dandy. Sheriff Oscar, your first mission has already come in. Listen, you've got to go to... Hey, what about my weapon? What? My sheriff's weapon. What kind of law enforcement official can I be without a weapon? Yeah, you're right. Hmm. Of course, your sheriff's weapon. Sorry, I forgot to bring that. I'll go get it. You wait here and I'll be back faster than you can say sheriff. Yes, I know the rifle Sushi shot me with when I got to Douglasville has to be around here somewhere. I know she won't mind if I take it. Now this is looking better. So you were saying? What is my first mission as sheriff? Look, about three miles south of Douglasville, there's a couple of guys creating a ruckus and frightening the locals. You've got to stop them and lock them up in the Douglasville jail. But watch your step, partner. These guys are armed and dangerous. Don't you worry, friend. In the penitentiary, they used to call me Terminator. I'm going after them. Good luck. I'm sure you can do the job, Sheriff. OK. The best thing to do would be to head for Douglasville and wait there until Oscar's completed his mission. From this window, I'll be able to see Oscar when he arrives. Here comes Gustav and Theodore's car. And Oscar is driving. So I guess everything went OK. Yes, he's pulling them out of the car. And he's tied them up hand and foot. What a tough dude. He's grabbed each of them by one arm and is dragging him into the jail. Whoa, he's so buff. I've got to tell Sushi. Sushi, good news. Really? What is it? Those cursed assassins are now locked away in the town jail. But how did you manage that? It was Oscar. I made him the town sheriff and gave him his first mission, to capture those two killers. No way. <laughs> You're unbelievable, Brian. That big guy Oscar is unbelievable. By the way, I gave him your rifle so he could carry out his mission. You don't mind, do you? No, that's OK. Plus, I won't be needing it anymore. Law and order have been brought back to town. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, this is all good, but it doesn't solve the real problem. Besides, we're not exactly the murdering types. And even if we were, all we'd achieve by eliminating Gustav and Theodore is for the Sandretis to send more killers after us. Yep, you're right. We've got to think of something to free us of the Sandretis for good. You said it. You know what? I think I'll go and congratulate Oscar and get the pleasure of seeing those two thugs behind bars. Are you coming? No, not right now. You go, and I'll keep thinking of a plan. All right, see you soon. See you soon. Oscar, good work. You managed to catch those two bad guys. Thanks, but I was just doing my job. Those two bandits thought they could beat me with a little gun and some knives. Yeah, they were really fooling themselves. You locked them up in the cell, right? Yeah, the things they were carrying are in a jail bag on the desk in the office. Perfect, Oscar. You're a real professional. Just doing my work. By the way, Brian, from now on, would you mind calling me Sheriff? Of course not. It would be a pleasure, Sheriff. Hi, guys.
You. You're the moron behind all this? Not as much of a moron as you, it seems. This time you've met your match, one would say. Wouldn't you, boys? You mean that orangutan? He caught us off guard. He didn't look dangerous with that silly face. I'd watch my mouth if I were you. If Oscar hears you, I accept no responsibility for his actions. You're some smart aleck kid, but you're out of your league. Stop playing funny, boy. You're a dead man. Yeah, deader than that corpse there behind you. I don't think you should be threatening anyone at this point. You should be begging. And speaking of that guy back there, take a good look, because that's how you guys are going to end up. What a waste of time talking to two killers. Okay, examining the stuff those two guys were carrying around may give us some ideas. The canvas is pretty worn out, but I don't think it'll tear. Where's the girl? What kind of game do you think you're playing, kid? Let us go. You won't get anywhere doing that. Let me take a look. A gun, three loaders, a few knives, brass knuckles, a couple of wallets, and a cell phone. Run in the middle stuff. Sushi. Yes, Brian. I brought you everything Gustav and Fyodor had on him. Maybe you can use it to investigate on the internet or something like that. Okay, as soon as I have time, I'll take a look at it. Leave it on the table for me, please. All right, it's all inside a jail bag. Okay. Sushi, sorry for disturbing you. No problem. Have you taken a look at Gustav and Fyodor's things? Yeah, but I bet all their papers are fake. I haven't found any information on their past on the internet. Although, well, there is one thing I discovered. Gustav is a total movie fan. Movie? How do you know? While looking through his wallet, I found a season ticket to the Film Archives of New York. Can you believe it? That animal is a cinema lover. I don't want to imagine what his favorite films are. You know, movies are what I miss most since moving here. In Boston, I used to go two or three times a week. You like movies? Oh, I do too. I'm a major movie freak. Oh, yeah? So tell me, who is your favorite director? Woody Allen. He's my favorite too. I know it's hard to pick since there are so many good ones, but which of his movies do you like best? Manhattan Murder Mystery. I love that one. Do you remember the scene where... Hey, wait a minute. I solve all this. Just let me think for a minute here, but it should work. Wait, let me organize everything, and then I'll explain. But can't you tell me about your bright idea? No, I'd rather make sure that we have everything we need first. Come back in an hour, okay? Seems like it's been an hour to me. Well? Let me explain. Remember how in Manhattan Murder Mystery they record the husband's voice in order to pretend that he makes a phone call later on? Yeah, sure I remember. My idea is to do something similar. We'll call the Sandrettis pretending to be one of the thugs. There's a cellular phone in Gustav and Theodore's safe. I've looked through it, and there's a number memorized as bosses which is undoubtedly the number they call to report to the Sandretti. We use a more sophisticated system than in the movie, a voice emulation program I downloaded once from a website called The Way Secret and Fully Invincible. What would we achieve by calling the Sandrettis and pretending to be the thugs? We'll make them suspect that Gustav and Theodore are intending to keep the cash for themselves. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. How do we do it? You have to record the thugs' voices. 
so I can enter samples into the program. It'll analyze. Sound like the voice of those killers. The program is that good? Guaranteed. Meanwhile, you have to record Gina saying something like, you lying murderer, you killed him, and now you want to keep the money. Gina is on our side, so we can just use her voice. We don't need to emulate it. Got it? Yeah, but 